I don't know about you, but I was flabbergasted at the amount of gaslighting going on in the media and by the IOC about the true sex of these two boxers who are competing in women's boxing. They're male. You trust me. I believe you trust me. You wouldn't be listening to this show. They're male. They have XY chromosomes. They have testes. That's male. Period. The IOC doesn't deny it. And we'll get to exactly how they're trying to thread the needle. But that's what you need to know. These are these are men competing as women. They're not trans from what we understand. They suffer what's called DSDs. Um, and that's a different thing, which we'll get into. But I'm going to walk you through it. OK, I'm going to I'm going to give you the facts you need to know, but a little bit of background for you. First, the IOC has been aware of this problem in women's boxing for years, and it's done nothing because its number one goal is, quote, inclusion. And it's made that clear. It's woke. It doesn't care about women's safety or women's fairness. It just cares about making the trans or the DSDs feel welcome and safety of women be damned. But this particular case has escalated the matter, escalated the matter because it's now in combat sports. Leah Thomas was bad enough. That was swimming, but he was in his own lane. Now we're actually endangering women. This has been banned in sports like rugby because that's another combat sport. And the, the entity that controls boxing for women, the International Boxing Federation, has also said this is a no-go and disqualified these two athletes before. And they notified the IOC that these are males and the IOC ignored it. Its only response has been to attack the Boxing Federation uh, and to say, you know, hands over the ears, it's not true, we're just not gonna listen. They have female written on their passports. It's insane what they're doing. Right, let me kick it off with what we heard from Mark Adams, who's the IOC comms director, last week when this controversy first erupted with the boxer from Nigeria. There's another one from Taiwan. Take a listen to him, SOT21. They are uh, women in their passports, and it's stated uh, that that is the case, uh, that they are female. Um, they're competing in the women's category. Again, I don't want, want to mention their names or whatever, but these athletes have competed uh, many times before for many years. Okay, so they're, they're female, because he says they're female. By the way, Algeria, not Nigeria. And they've competed as females for many years. He, he skips over the part where they, they were disqualified from Worlds in 2023 for being men. OK, so basically they got away with it for a number of years. Therefore, they are female. That doesn't hold up. It got to the point where the organization that oversees women's boxing, the International Boxing Association, felt the need to come out publicly and say the IOC is misleading you. And this just happened over the weekend. And they explained this past weekend that this thing started in Turkey in May of 2022 when they were in competition. Tests were taken, and they said the results were inconsistent with femaleness. Um, next thing they knew, they had championships in 2023 in New Delhi, India. The world championships come in New Delhi, India. Female world championships. There were 324 boxers from 64 nations. It was a 10-day competition. And Taiwan's Lin Yoting and Algeria's Amin Khalif were two of those 324 boxers. Now, they and others... This is not that uncommon. It's not common, but it's not unheard of for people participating in this sport and others like it um, to be concealing that they suffer from what are called DSDs, suspected differences of sexual development, differences of sexual development. We used to use the term hermaphrodite. Then they changed it to intersex. Now they go by DSDs. And what it means in this case is you're someone who's a male you have XY chromosomes and testes, but you don't have descended testes and sometimes you don't have a penis. And But then when you hit puberty, something might start growing. But there's no doubt that in the vast majority of these cases, the guy knows he's a guy, at least by the time he hits puberty. And certainly these two know because they had an XY chromosome test done repeatedly, including a blood test, according to the officials in that world championships, that told them they're men. They know. They, according to the experts, would not have any female interior, uh, in, you know, internal organs, no uterus, no ovaries, no fallopian tubes, 
there'd be no period, no breast would grow, and that's consistent with what our eyes show us when we see these two compete. But they do have male testes that usually are undescended, so when they are born, they may look female in the genitalia, and therefore many of them are raised as girls in the beginning by well-meaning families who don't understand what they have here. And then it becomes apparent later on as they continue to look more and more like boys, and then they hit puberty, and often the testes do descend and something approaching a penis could start growing. And all of that deserves empathy and understanding and kindness and non-bullying. And I think we're all there. However, it gets a lot trickier when they enter female sports, especially combat sports, and then remain in them after they know. Because this is not a question of elevated testosterone. They have perfectly normal testosterone for men for men. They haven't done anything to manipulate their testosterone. It's not a matter of doping, you know, in a way. It's a matter of biology. And this would be the same thing as an Olympian going and competing in the Paralympics. That's not allowed. They have able bodies and you can't compete against people who don't have those same physical advantages. It would be unfair. We would recognize it clearly in that context. We choose not to here because the IOC is woke. Let me go back to the facts. They were asked to take these further blood tests. They did. They demonstrated chromosomes. This is from the IBA, International Boxing Association Presser, that we refer to as ineligible results. That was further ratified and they were removed. He said, we've got a document that was sent to both boxers, refers to the blood test. We're not able to give the actual blood test results here due to medical privacy, but both boxers signed our letter to show receipt. They had seen the XY. Both had the opportunity to appeal. The uh, Taiwanese fighter chose not to appeal, but Iman Khalif did appeal. And he said, we had further discussions with Iman and we paid for most of that appeal, but Iman dropped it. And therefore it was never actually adjudicated. Now I ask you, if you were an actual female, why would you drop your appeal? You were deprived of boxing in the gold medal round. You had made it through all the other rounds. You're about to fight for gold and they DQ you for being male and you drop the appeal. Why? Why, why isn't that in all the reporting? Wired. You've been absolutely disgusting. You're a tech magazine. For the love of God, stick to writing about computers because you don't know shit about fairness in sport. The IBA then sent a letter to the International Olympic Committee on June 5th, 2023, informing them of the test results. Summary, abnormal. Interpretation, chromosomal anal analysis reveals male karyotype, which means chromosome. Male chromosomes have been found. What happens with the IOC? They come out and double down. They don't care. They couldn't care less that the Boxing Federation is saying they're men. We tested, it's a blood test, and we told the IOC. Here is the IOC, again, trying to gaslight us. Thomas Bach, the worst. He's the president of the IOC on Saturday. Let's be very clear here. We are talking about uh, women's boxing. And uh, we have uh, two boxers who are born as women, who have been raised as women, who have a passport as a woman, and who have competed for many years as women. And this is the clear definition of a woman. And there was never any doubt about them being a woman. And how can somebody being born, raised, competed, and having a passport as a woman cannot be considered a woman? That man sitting there knows that they tested positive via blood test for XY chromosomes. He's a liar. He's got an agenda. Moreover, the IOC at that presser came out, the same guy, and said, I repeat, this is not a DSD case. It's not a DSD case. Okay, so he's trying to say, no, they're not intersex, etc. This is about a woman taking part in a woman's competition, and I think I've explained this many times. Guess what happened after the presser? The IOC had to issue a paper correction. The correction reads as follows. He said, I repeat here, this is not a DSD case. What was intended was, I repeat here, this is not a transgender case. 
that's it right there. That's the admission. It's a DSD case, which we know because they have XY chromosomes. They are men. It's not about elevated testosterone. It's about them being actual men, XY chromosomes, which you cannot get around. Uh, the doctor for the IOC, who's on the board of it, it's not the IOC, the International Boxing Federation, uh, Dr. Ianis Filipatos, came out and said it explicitly. Listen to this. Slot 17. I can see that the medical result, medical result, blood result, looks and says the laboratories that this boxer is male. Okay, that was incomprehensible, but I read what he said, and what he said was that we looked at the blood tests and the laboratories, these boxers are male. So he gave it up, even though the first guy who spoke for the IBF was like, oh, we can't be, be specific because of privacy. Then on comes the doctor, who's a board member for the Boxing Federation, and says, they're men. Um, you've got, not for nothing, but a guy named Alan Abramson, award-winning sports writer, prior sports columnist for NBC News, saying he's seen the test himself and the letter, which the IBA concluded uh, showed the boxers were male, and said it shows the, that Emane Khalif has the DNA, which is that of a male consisting of XY chromosomes, the lab results for each athlete depict the XY chromosomes photographically, and on and on it goes. The proof is overwhelming, and the IOC was told. There is no way around this. I am sorry that these two got all the way to the medal rounds now. They're both guaranteed to medal because they've been beating women over and over, and they did so well that they're going to win. I'm sorry that they were allowed to do that and were falsely led to believe it would be okay. It's not okay. It's not okay. The one woman who was defeated by one of these over the weekend, you saw her hold up the XX with the fingers, XX, trying to say, I'm a woman. This is a woman's competition. And that's how it must remain if we are going to protect the safety of American women and all the other women who have to go into this already dangerous sport. This is not one of the risks they assume. Look at her, right on. But you know what really needs to be done? I'm sorry, don't box. The Italian woman who was defeated by Amin Khalif last weekend, she wound up issuing an apology, Charlie Kirk predicted it, an apology for speaking out against him. If the IOC let him play, I guess it's fair. Well, no, it's not fair. And I'm sorry, I guess these women have to worry about blowback to themselves, but they should also be worrying about the women who come up behind them because they too are in danger and someone's going to get killed. The Boxing Federation and the boxing officials who've been polled, one of the, one of the old female uh, world champions, former, said Imain Khalif's not, not even a very good boxer. He's winning because he's male and female pronouns are inappropriate in this context. The co-founder of the Independent Council on Women's Sports condemn the IOC. The cover-up and championing of male athletes in women's Olympic sports is the greatest sports scandal of our lifetime. Heads must roll within the IOC to account for this unthinkable justice against women. Couldn't have said it better myself. If you're tired of the same old coffee from those mega corporations pushing their woke agendas, listen up. It's time to take a stand and support a brand that embodies American values. At Blackout Coffee, they stand with hardworking Americans who believe in family, faith, and freedom. They roast some of the most incredible coffee you will ever taste using only premium grade beans. And guess what? They roast and ship within 48 hours to ensure you get the freshest coffee possible. I love this because I'm not into grinding my own beans. That's a pain in the butt. It adds another step to the process and I'm already tired. So to know that I'm getting the freshest coffee, it was ground within 48 hours of me drinking it, that's big. You could start your day with a bold cup of blackout coffee. Plus, it's not just coffee. It's a statement. Why settle for less? Make the switch to blackout coffee today by heading on over to the blackoutcoffee.com slash MK site, or just use the code MK for 20% off your first order. Blackoutcoffee.com slash MK, and the code is MK. Join the movement. Taste the difference. Remember, with every sip, you are supporting a brand that stands for America. Be awake, not woke. Thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.